George Mason show, everybody. How you doing? Good evening. Huh. Come on. Coming on. Talk about whatever. It's like that. Huh. I want to talk about whatever. I can do that. Can I? Yes, I can. Basically, I love this beat. That's basically what's going on right now. I'm going to talk over the beat. How about that? And last night, I had on uh, Steve Solis. Coming up to Steve. And, and Dwayne Kennedy. Yes. Two very talented writers. They're both writers. They both produce. They do their thing. And um, they direct and, uh, and do stand up and act and uh, very talented individuals. And uh, both out of Chi Town. And um, I met them years ago uh, when we were working out, uh, uh, trying our trade and that uh, place called the West End Cafe. In, Ma in Manhattan, in New York City. I'm out of New York. I'm based out of New York. And I uh, came across these guys, and uh, I was impressed. Uh, you know, and still am. You know, and uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Kennedy's uh, comedy. And uh, these brothers say, well, I'm, I'm talking and, and just kind of like, babbling along or whatever. And I show some pictures. I want to show some video. And uh, this is them. This is on the left. That's Dwayne Kennedy. A uh, very, very funny man. And uh, give him a round of applause. And that's Steve. Steve Solis. Huh? That's right. And they were on the show. And uh, we were talking uh, about different topics and stuff and I was wanted to get into more of like the different styles of comedy as Dwayne does a a bit about like how like black audiences kind of expect a certain kind of uh, you know material uh, from black comedians uh, he didn't say that I'm paraphrasing a little bit but Basically, that's what he was saying. It's just like when a black comic comes out and they work in the white rooms, you know, and there's, there's white rooms and there's black rooms and comedy. You play the chitlin circuit as a black comedian starting out a lot of times. That's the black rooms, like the chitlin circuit. And you, you go around those are tough rooms um, and they're difficult a lot of times. If you, if you have a, a style, a different style, and they are expecting something else, you know. And but Dwayne does a bit. It, it, it's a piece at the end of his uh, special. He's had these uh, specials. Uh, there they are again. Specials on uh, Showtime. He's done Letterman, Conan, and uh, he's accomplished a very uh, gifted, polished, seasoned comedian. And I'm going to show this uh, little clip that I love about uh, black comedy. Well, not even black comedy, I, actually. It's just, you know, uh, how black comedians are perceived or what they expect. And that was like his only hit. Different type of show than I expected, man. You know, and I'm glad. I hope it's a different type of show than you expected, you know, a, a bit. Because, you know what I mean? I mean, sometimes people see like, 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 uh, uh, black comedians and stuff and they think oh man it's gonna be like i can't wait he's gonna be talking about everybody he's gonna be talking about that dude hey, talk about his head talk, talk about that brother right there he can't walk talk about him i don't like to do that man and it's, it kills me when you see like black comedians who come on sometimes and and they come out like and they and they'll and they'll dog out the audience but then they'll try to slip in some social commentary yeah I, I, those brothers kill me be like ignorant with a message <laughs> I come out like, God damn, I'm in this motherfucking house. Look at all these motherfuckers here. Look at my, where all my niggas at. Look at all these motherfucking niggas. 
niggas right here. Look at this black ass bitch right here. This fucking black ass nasty stankin' stank. Fucking nasty, fucking stank nasty. Black fucking stank nasty black bitch right here. Fucking black. And speaking of nasty fucking stank bitches, we got to love our sisters, cause they queens. They queens. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I know you know what I'm saying. This bald head black motherfucker right here. Bubble lip motherfucker. No job having mother. Government cheese receiving motherfucker. Right pussy eating motherfucker right here. And speaking of eating pussy, ladies and gentlemen, it's too many kids going to bed hungry at night. All right, thank you all. I'm done. Yes, 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 Mr. Wayne Kennedy. And, uh, you know, it's amazing how, like, uh, you know, you could work, like, uh, a room, a black room a lot of times, and you might have five or seven acts on the show, and uh, maybe five or six of them, if you have seven acts, are doing basically the same material. It's not even material. It's just riffing. And, and beating up on the audience. I was at a, a a room one time, a black room. Like I say, it's black rooms and white rooms. It's, you know, it's comedy, but then again, it's just like in doing the, uh, when, when Def Jam, when it first came out, you know, these guys, I guess this was their way of like, getting up and just getting their shit off or whatever. But they used to, you know, I was, I was at one spot and they made this girl, I mean, there was a whole table full, it was like four girls at a table. And the guy came up and he just, I'm not going to say his name. He just picked this girl, probably just made her, he broke her down so hard, he made her cry. It's almost like, you know, with the way he was talking about that, to what he was saying as far as like, he was just in, just, you know, going in for, you know, and the crowd was loving it. They was laughing and whatever, you know, because sometimes it's like, all right, you're not picking on me. You know, you making fun of her, or whatever. The girl was crying, man. She was a uh, she was a mess. Even her girlfriends were some were laughing, and you know they were, but it was fucked up because, like, you know, she's gonna. It, it's miserable, man. How, how can you do that to another human being in front of other people, humiliate them, and uh, embarrass them to that degree for laughs, for whatever. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the club sent over a bottle of champagne to console her. You know, but, you know, I, I, I mean, but, you know, that's how, that's, that's how it goes down. And, you know, and that was several years ago. And things now still, you know, that, that's how a lot of these guys come out. And they, I guess they call that an act. I guess they call that material. But, you know, Dwayne... Uh, has material. Dwayne Kennedy has material, real material. Uh, Steve Solis has material, real material. When I say they have their own style, you know, and that's what it is. I have my own style. I have material. You know, I have that, you know, if you want to play the dozens, you know, you go into black rooms and stuff and you have to, sometimes you have to be a little combative. You got to get them off you, you know, say something or whatever. You, you got to have your comebacks, your snaps, if you will. You got to be quick on your feet. But that's in any room, basically. And I'll play some white rooms. A room like uh, back in, in Brooklyn was uh, in Sheepshead Bay. Uh, it was Pips. That was a tough room. You know, a lot of Italians in there. And they uh, it was a, a well-known heckler's room. You know, you know that you were going to get heckled. You go to Pips. You know, them, them Italians will come at you hard. They'll say whatever. They'll call you all kind of names. Mulian, which is a derogatory, you know, for nigger, black. You know, so, but you have to be on your feet. And you, you got to, you know, like I said, punch back, keep them off of you. You know, but you don't want to go in there. And, you know, a lot of the black acts will go in and they'll just do the stereotypical 
stuff to to get white people to be on their side to like them they you know are just a seller yeah it basically is selling out to some extent you know for laughs if you're going in there and making fun of your own race you know to uh to get laughs and then they, they a lot of these cats man they go on to the to the, to the black rooms and, and do basically the same thing like i say we'll just take their own they don't talk about themselves pretty much they don't they don't do that but they will definitely jump on somebody and beat them down. But I, I didn't get too deep into that with uh, with Steve and Dwayne last night because uh, they came and they were promoting. They have a show that's coming up on the um, the twentieth, which is in two days. That's uh, uh, January the twentieth. It's going to Steve and Dwayne's comedy fiasco. Uh, they'll be at uh, nine ninety. Columbus Avenue uh, between 108th and 109th Street. That's in Manhattan on Columbus Avenue. Uh, and the show time is 7 o'clock early show. And it's a $10 cover, uh, one drink minimum, which is not, uh, they're not hitting you over the head. They're not beating you up with that. A lot of spots you know, in the city, you, you'll get it uh, like one uh, $20, $25, and two drink minimum or two item minimum, whatever, you know. So it can be a little costly, a little pricey, but and the, what you're going to get is, is talented for that for that money is well worth it, you know. So support them, so continue to support comedy and the whole thing. And I want to show you another clip of Dwayne. You're real short. This one is short. Brother is just, like I said, he's got some, some, some excellent stuff. And it's just a snippet. Let white folks have it, man. Just right out the gate, just, you know. Let me tell you something. Your pathological greed and compulsive need for control has been the single most source of pain and misery for people of color throughout this world for generations. But I try not to say things like that anymore. Because <laughs> I found once you have said something like that to a white person, you almost never get a second date. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's Dwayne Kennedy, you know, clever, clever stuff. And uh, that, that picture at the end of that bit looks a little bit like, uh, uh, you guys watch Good Times, like Mike Evans, looks like a young Mike Evans. Uh, he's from Chicago too, right? The series took place in uh, Cabrini Green, the projects back there. That was a rough, rough hood, rough uh, housing uh, complex project. Cabrini Green was like, notorious huh but yeah that's that's shy town and uh brothers uh they came through hey karen what's good what's good uh karen bought on the check-in no doubt now i was talking about the brothers that were on last night from chicago that they were doing their things and i uh was giving them their props i appreciate it i also want to play another clip of Dwayne's, uh which uh you know, just talking about like how comedy, you know, uh, the styles, people sometimes expect a certain uh, style and they kind of, you know, don't give an artist or a comedian, female or male, uh, a, a chance to some extent to express themselves their own way. Like in, in rap, music, uh, or how hip hop, R and B, you 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 should different styles, huh? Do you go from DMX uh, to a Will Smith, right? But they have styles. They both have something to say, but the styles is is kind of what makes. And and then it's the lyrics, right? The written word, or how you're uh, coming across with it, that has a lot to do with it, for sure. And uh, the, what you the, the message that you are delivering conveying and getting over i love comedy and is making his uh, debut with us tonight he was voted best stand-up comedian at this year's aspen comedy festival ladies and gentlemen do me a favor please welcome dwayne kennedy oh dwayne <laughs> What's pop?
popping. How you feeling? I feel good too. Thanks for asking. I've been reading the Bible, uh, and this is what I have learned: is two things that they talk about in the Bible a lot: wine. And stuff that's hard to believe. <laughs> I think the wine came first, <laughs> and then thus, ergo, comes all the stuff that you know is kind of you know, because you know how sometimes, man, you be drinking wine with a group of friends or, you know, some apostles. And, and a story will just start getting away from you. You know I mean? Yeah, man, I remember yesterday I saw like a dog or like a beast when he had one or seven heads and the bush was on fire and talking to me. I'm drunk. But you can quote me on that. I hear you writing a book. I'm not I'm not real re religious man, but I do like like gospel tunes. I like like Negro spirituals, you know what I mean? I like Negroes with spirits, you know what I mean? I, I like Swing Low, Sweet Cherry. That's a brilliant song, man, but you have to listen to it because it had more than one meaning, you know what I mean? It was like, it was not just an ethereal aspiration to God. It also meant get ready because we get ready to get out of here. You know, it was, that was the code. It was like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. You know, the Underground Railroad is coming for to carry us home, you know what I mean? or to Detroit, or wherever it is you want to be <laughs> dropped off, you know. And you got to think, it took a brilliant mind, man, to be able to write a song on that many levels, you know, because you know it was probably a lot of slaves who tried to write spirituals, <laughs> but just wasn't really that good at concealing the message. <laughs> and they'd be like, uh, uh, hey, 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 Joshua, won't you, won't you sing that spiritual? I hear you've been working on it. Uh, all right, Mouser. Uh, oh, tonight at 8 30, gonna get some shovels and bash white folk in the head. What time? 8.30. <laughs> Joshua's songwriting career, over. <laughs> but now, people trying to find something, all right? People searching since whatever happened, you know what I mean? Searching for God or searching for Osama or, you know, since they don't offer $25 million reward, more people searching for Osama than God, you know what I mean? Just, <laughs> and now we're at war, you know? Not with a country, we're at war with an ideology. Which is weird, man, because the only intriguing part about war, man, with the United States is you always see the new stuff that the United States has developed to wipe you out. Because it's not war, not like it used to be. Remember, war back in the day used to have some character, some flavor. Like, you remember, we probably don't remember this, but like the Revolutionary War? <laughs> right back then, you got a little music with your war. You know what I mean? Dude on drums, dude on fife, you know what I mean? A little background music while you're getting shot. <laughs> You know, even the Civil War, they had a dude out there on bugle when you got there, you know. Uh, welcome to the war. This next tune I wrote in Paris, I call this one Charge. <laughs> Dude behind him playing bass. I don't know how we got this gig. <laughs> but now, man, everything is, everything's high tech, you know? Everything is smart, smart weapons, as opposed to, it used to be like just hope weapons, you know? <laughs> Send a missile off, hope it would hit something. <laughs> right? Then the Persian Gulf War came out. Remember that? And the smart weapons, remember that? Tomahawk missile, remember that? Flying this high off the ground, through the streets. 
dodging buildings, looking for your house. <laughs> Any of you kids seen Dwayne? He lives right down the street, Mr. Missile, sir. All right, thanks. Stay in school. All right, you all. Thank you very much. That's funny, funny, funny. The brother's incredibly talented. He's a very funny guy. Very funny man. And, um, hey, they're going to be, uh, they, when I say they, Steve Solis and uh, Dwayne Kennedy. You catch them live uh, this uh, Saturday night uh, at 7 p.m. on 990 Columbus Avenue. Uh, Steve and Dwayne's Comedy Fiasco at Kreps at Columbus. It's the name of the spot. And uh, yeah, be sure to do that. It's only 10 bucks. Uh, one item uh, minimum, one drink, a uh, food item or whatever. The food is good. The drinks are, are, are good as well. You know, so support. And uh, you'll be glad you did. And, and Karen, Karen Bowden po po pointed out when I was talking about Cabrini Green, you know, how, how rough it was in the south side, side town. She said, yeah, they cleaned it up. So, yeah, so that's what's up. That's, that's a definitely a good thing. But, yeah, I just wanted to come on and, uh, as I said, thank uh, my guests for last night and acknowledging them and uh, also to to say I, I, I talking about uh, auditioning, like, for the Apollo, uh, Showtime at the Apollo back in the day, and I had mentioned about how uh, I was on a show, the audition spot, where they had uh, Monteria Ivy was the host, uh, Dave Chappelle, young Chappelle at that time, uh, he was on the show as well. And I had said talent, but no talent wasn't on that show. It was Bill Bellamy. And uh, I don't know, I was thinking Bill said talent, but it was Bill. But I just wanted to make that correction. But yeah, and uh, several other acts, I can't remember, but and Chuck Sutton and Sarah Smith and Don Weiner. Uh, it was the production and directors uh, from the Apollo staff and crew. But yeah, I just want to, uh, again, thank you guys as well. Be safe out there. Have a good uh, new year, a good 2024. Uh, protect yourself. And uh, I always leave, uh, try to leave on an up note, a positive note to say, uh, if you love somebody, you have a loved one, tell them you love them. Don't be afraid to say that because, uh, as you know, life is short. So you just want to, to, to keep it positive, keep up on the, on the up note, and you can't be in the wrong if you're doing the right thing, right? And persistence always overcomes resistance. Say thank you. Say God bless you. Have a good night. Peace. Play you out with this. Let it be. Huh. Yes, yes, yes.